I will call the meeting to order. So oh, this absolutely. is the development review board meeting for September 5th. Um, the agenda is accurate as it is posted online and all communications have been posted as well, correct? So, uh, yes. Um, minutes from the last meeting, if anyone had any comments, we should have sent to AJ. All right. Going through the agenda and the order in which the items appear. So that's starting with two items on our consent agenda. Do we have the applicant for 3140 North Avenue? Yes. Um, do come up here. Uh, just state your name. Uh, Attorney Michael. Thank you. So have you had a chance to review the staff report? I didn't get that. No, I apologize. Okay. Um, since this was recommended for consent, if you are okay with the staff report and the um, recommendations and requirements within that, we could move forward without a hearing. But if you hadn't had a chance to review it, no major changes to do. I talk here. Two items of note: um, finalizing the driveway. Um, I know that you proposed. Um, the driveway set up that would be under 300 square feet for lot coverage. So, yes, that's, uh, finalizing that with me before um, final posting and final window specs because I know you move some windows around. We just removed one of the windows, so none of that. Yep, so okay. because the windows are no, 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 okay. yeah. so I have no interest in that. Okay, does anyone from the board object to this being treated as? I do not have any questions for the applicant, but I would like to discuss with the board. Okay. With <laughs> that, removing it from consent, is there anything that you. I do not have any questions for it. Okay. Uh, is there anything that you wanted to present on this or talk through with us? Otherwise, I'm here to answer questions. I don't have okay. any. Is there anyone here from the public to speak on this? Uh, let me look. We have Courtney Landon. Courtney, I don't think you're here for this item, but if you want to speak, kind of raise your hand. Okay. If no one has any questions, no. We're all set then for right now, and we will probably deliberate on that tonight. Okay, moving on to the next agenda item, which is 324 South Union Street. We have the. I don't see the applicants here yet. So maybe come back to it a little later. Okay. Um, 300 Lake Street. Street. That's you, Doc. That's me. Yeah. All right. That's me. You'll be better in my head. If you want to come up here, say your name. I will swear you in. I'm going to be Donald Dugan. I'm here representing Champlain Housing Products. Thank you. Um, do you swear to that the testimony that you give tonight is true um, under pain and penalty of perjury? I do. Um, great. Do you want to give us? A little bit of an overview. We saw a document. Anything that you want to present? Otherwise, we can check. I mean, I think really the the substance of it is just the issue about the frontage um, on Bow Street, just in regards to the um, determination of the type of fence that we can use behind the building. Our question for you. Sure. So I think it's actually two issues. It's the height of the fence and the girl of the fence. I think I'm right about that. Yeah, I, this I, is I, quite similar to the row on the fence. Yeah, okay. you know, so it's, it's the, height the location of the, of the fence, yeah. it's the height okay. of the fence, yeah. and it's the material of the fence right. in this instance. I wanted to ask so, is the height and the material? Um, are you okay if you have to change the material, which I think is something that is acceptable in the zoning? I mean, the, the issue is that the chain link does the job actually better than probably any other materials 
um, gives us some transparent, you know, having an opaque fence there is going to be a problem because you won't be able to see what's going on behind the fence. And then if, um, you know, we did a wood stockade fence, we know it's not going to last, you know, and then other things are, you know, orders of magnitude more expensive. So, you know, we only have limited resources. So, um, you know, we find the black chain link is sort of like the nice happy medium. It's got a little bit pointy at the top. You people from going over the top, but it's very durable. We got, you know, we get four years out of it. So was it quite clear to me from the sketch is how far off Tifo Street is the fence. The fence is on your property line, right? That's well, no, the fence is not really on, on Depot Street. It's not on our property line at all. The property line, I don't know. We have a we have a good site plan on the one of the engineering drawings. I think has got the. Is there a prettier plan than this, Tom? No, it happened to be the kid getting prettier than that. I mean, this is pretty pretty. There is, this, I think, I think I put an I put an overall site plan. There's like engineering site plan in there. Let's see. There's the site section also that probably shows the. I think that's what I put in there to show the site section, the distance, yeah, the site section. Yeah, that one. As legible as that is on a, from an engineering drawing standpoint. Well, I'll, I'll show that. Yeah. Yeah, this one, yeah. I tried to darken it up a little bit so you can see that, you know, this is. I'm not going to touch it, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> this is Depot Street here. You know, this is, you know, this one here is our, actually, no, this is our property line way in here, right? Dash, dot, dash. Because this is, this for some reason, this has got a huge, you know, right of way. So they could turn it into a super highway or something. And so, you know, our property line is way down here and we're still way off of here on the, on the fence line here. So, and then you can see like how much grade change we've got here. The site section shows that the best. Um, and then the height, you know, it's kind of, the, the issue is because the grade is changing so, so quickly on the, on the depot street side, like if I put up a six foot fence, you probably jump over it because yeah. there's no, there's so much, you know, it was, it's a very, it's extremely odd site. So that's, you know, sort of how we ended up where we ended up. Thank you. Did you consider putting the fence farther up to your advantage to have more gate? Well, it's not, then it's not really buildable or then that slope is not necessarily 100% stable. So if I touch that slope, I mean, you know, we could really be undermining stuff. So the, you know, basically we're just fencing in the flat spot that was created to build the building. Um, so, and then, you know, everything out, everything about that slope is bad news. So we try to not touch it as much as we can. Then, you know, we, we did, I mean, just so you know, we did build this with the city. You know, they were, they, we, we, they were, they gave us the land they were very involved in the project. So this they were project predated the um, long base code. Yeah, yeah. code. Yes. Yes. Why, uh, why would you consider you and the city uh, um, sort of clearing the adjacent areas to make them a little well ordered open space rather than have a fence that's eight feet tall? Reminds me of a prison yard. I mean, it's sort of a, it, it's a jungle right now. Right. Um, again, it goes back to the, you know, the slopes on both sides are not very stable. And the best thing we can do is keep them vegetated and, um, you know, naturalized. And, you know, that discourages people somewhat to, from coming through. Um, but, you know, it's not impenetrable. And there's, you know, like one path that comes down basically from you know this this path here. You know this this space here being slightly less steep. You can see this little bit of little kinks in the in the topos there, and that that there's a little path that comes down there. Um, that comes the path of passion. 
So I guess, I guess just to go back to your question, you know, why don't we, yeah, so we, we clearing the hillside doesn't really seem like a, a wise choice just because we're going to be undermining the, um, undermining the hillside, stability of the hillside. Um, there's not a, you know, the number of units that back up onto that space is not a lot. You know, there's one on that, there's two that have patios and then there's three that have porches. Um, the tenants have expressed to us that their primary concern is about security. People coming down the hill. People coming down the hill, people ending up in the parking garage. Um, that's, that's, you know, that's the feedback we're getting from our tenants is that they don't feel safe in the backyard and they want to, or, you know, things are getting stolen off their porches, that kind of thing. Well, you, you didn't ask staff about the appeal, which typically we start right. with. Oh, sorry. Same thing okay. as this is the same issue as the Ronald McDonald House. We have two street frontages. So the code's very prescriptive. On a street frontage, you don't have a fence between the front property line and the building that's greater than four feet in height. So we have two street frontages. The one thing I would note, Donald, is when you're talking about here about this desire path, this is not a street frontage. Right. Yeah. But I it's the, this part. That is yeah. between the building and the yes. road. That's it's that it's that really that lay of the fence and whether the you know whether it makes I mean the ordinance is fairly clear. I mean all the just all the um all the diagrams and all the examples are you know a orthogonal street, gridded street, relationship between a building that is pretty close to the street and the street. And I think it totally makes sense in that situation. And just with this grade change and the distance between the road and the street, I mean, the distance between the road and the street has got to be 125 feet, maybe more. So, and then you, if you count the slope change, then it's even more. So, okay, so I have a question for Mary uh, about the lot layers. How do you count them? Lot layers, when I read that form based code, uh, in your comments, this is still the first lot layer. It's that. still a first lot layer. It's between the right of way and the building front. So this is a first lot layer here. No matter how great that distance. Yes, that's fine. So the yes, problem know. with where it's located, proposed height, and ultimately the material, which prohibits chain yeah. light. Yeah. And you know, part of the issue that we've confronted as a form for base codes is doesn't give us a lot of leeway, right? And it doesn't give us a lot of opportunity to, the, the point of it is to provide clarity and solution, yeah. which has its benefits, but also <laughs> negatives. Yeah. That's maybe one of them. Because I can see the value in saying, well, if it's 100 feet down the slope, slope it, you know, the, the purpose and the intent of reasonable regulation is so that in the form based code, someone's not putting up a, a, an eight foot chain fence. Right, it's on, a, on a you know a deactivated streetscape. Yeah, and I think I think really it's just like this parcel. You know, I I just don't think it, it was appropriate to apply form based code to this parcel. But I you know that's I think that's a bigger kettle of fish, and so I'm trying to you know come up with uh, the most wiggle room that I could see was saying that for the just for the purposes of the fencing. That the post street would not be considered a frontage. That was the most narrow thing I could come up with. So, Mary, thank yeah. you for your question. So, this, even at this project, when this project was built before Form Days Code, they could have put this fence up without any issues. Right, I can't say that I'm familiar with the regulations that were in effect. Mm -hmm. It's been here for a while. I know fences actually do not have height limits. We had to review applications things. under the regulations in effect at the time. Right. And so just... I did go back and look at earlier approved landscape plans. I wasn't certain if Donald's annotation there reflects an existing chain yeah. link fence, but there have been no fences approved. No, there's no chain, there's no chain link there. Yeah. I was just trying to 
I found two previously approved landscape plans and neither one include pencils. I, I know it's, we're just supposed to pay homage to the regulations as they exist, I know that. But it's really hard, both of these things, the Mark Ron McDonald House and this one, the fact that the form-based code is inhibiting fencing in for two very different reasons in two very different locations in things that are not regular sites just seems contrary to reason, I guess I would say. Uh, especially this one, um, you know, with, with the security they're looking at behind here, uh, following the form-based code, it, you know, it's as if this were part of the urban fabric and it's really not. But I know it's nothing you can say about that. I do not write the regulation. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Mary's painted in the corner, and that's that's why I'm here in front of you. Can what I mean the other issue? I just asked this about variances. The the, the key about variances are um, circumstances not of their making, and the topography here one could say is not of no that land. You know that they have not sought. No, I know that. I'm just asking very much. Well, there is an opportunity for alternative compliance uh, from this body to allow an additional 20% yeah. of the merit standard. Yeah. And that's not going to provide a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Frontage is is just, if it's close to a to how would how would frontage be the first determined? The, lot of the property line abuts the public right of way. Doesn't matter what the building. I wonder if the bone brewery technically borders the outer street. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Could I make it a work of art as a uh, <laughs> my favorite one the chain link was somebody that took, I think it was at, at switchback where they took the little bread tabs and hung it on all of the things and that made shimmering things you could plan. What's that? You could plan thorny bushes and a four-foot fence. Yeah, I mean that is, you know, there's a lot of you know, there's, there's lots of ways landscapes you know, I, I could spend a lot of money to solve the problem for sure. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, true. the question is, the question is, you know, is, is that a good use of resources of the affordable housing I appreciate situation? So you can build multiple layers of fencing yeah, for, we, because we, you are allowed yes, to do we, that. I, I could, yes, we can build a, a, a layer of fence on the, on Depot Street just to create, um, you know, another opportunity to make another fence. True. I mean, again, there is lots of ways for me to do this and spend a lot of money. It can't be chain link. Um, this doesn't seem that way. I'm just, I, I mean, I'm right with, I, it, I was at the same thing. I was like, this just doesn't, it just doesn't make any, just on the face of it, just doesn't make sense. Right. And so it's just sort of, you know, I don't expect everything to make perfect sense to me, but this one was a seem just especially, uh, we don't appeal for minutes very often. Let's just put it that way. And so this was just, it's just sort of hit the treasury of, it seemed a little bit absurd. Uh, any further comments from the board? Questions? Is there anybody online to wants to comment on this? Uh, we have two attendees. If you'd like to weigh in on this item, raise your hand. Otherwise, we'll move on. What's going on? Nobody's raising their hand. We'll close the public hearing. Debate uh, on this one. Okay. So does that include my part of the? You are done. All right. Thank you. I will look forward to the watching the video later. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. So we, we skipped um, the sound. Yeah. 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 Um, so next item on our agenda is the green convene to 66 College Street. Um, Jerry Crockett and Arlington and Castle LLC reopened major impact that you and so they've been sworn in. Raise your right hand. I'm square the testimony about the data and the matter under consideration is true and correct with the pains of the Yes. Okay. So um 
we ask you to bring back some revised renderings of the building. Uh, you want to walk us through what you did? Sure. So um, we uh, I, on this we did not do so much on this elevation, but um, we we made the street level um, a much darker, bolder color. Mm -hmm. um, so that was that was really the move on this side, and then the bigger changes are on the west. Give me a second. I should be able to scroll down with this game currently. So I'll be with the I'll keep going. The, the previous north elevation, one of the colors that's in that kind of checkerboard pattern, which honestly are a little bit uh, more rich than shows up in the rendering, but that had been used at the base. So this is an actual uh, third color that's a little bit. More saturated and, and stronger color, and then um, on this side we uh, reorganized some of the um, sort of white lines that divide it, and uh, we've got three different, well, four if you include the sort of white framing lines um, colors going on, and uh, there it's I guess it's a little hard to see from here, but um, in this rendering we're showing. Uh, some divers uh, coming down, but the, uh, the idea was that that's a place to locate uh, public art, and we would seek proposals from artists, probably have some sort of jury process to select one. It's a great place for um, I I think uh, Bruce and I would both be interested in seeing something that had relief to it, you know, a sculptural element there. and. Um, We've talked about something that uh, is referential to the academic activities in Milan. So, you know, divers are one, and maybe some sort of uh, mass of the yeah. uh, abstract sort of thing, but we don't know what it is yet. Any questions for the board? I mean, I, I think it's a positive change. It's going to really help expect difference for that. I like the art. I like the space for the art. I think it's a great place for it. We like it better too. And I, I mean, we, we were going to improve this, you know, whether you brought us back or not. So happy to do it. Um, anybody online? Who wants, any other questions, comments? No one's here. Anybody online who wants to talk about this? Is there anyone? Who wants to speak about this project? Raise your hand. Yeah. All right, Sharon, you're up. Yes, hi. Uh, um, I'm I'm sorry I'm not there. I wanted to go to the board. Sarah, can I swear you in? Okay, oh, yes. Your, your testimony, do you swear uh, that the testimony you're about to give in this matter under? Consideration is true and correct, and the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. Okay, thank you. Hi. Um. Good evening. Um. I'm sorry. I'm not there in person. I'm looking at the design that Scott put up. Um. And um. The the way I see it is that the the colors have changed and the detail is different. Um. So I I think that anything that made that those um that building more interesting, um, I, I think is good um, and broke up the massing. So I, I support that. I couldn't, uh, from the minutes from your last meeting, I had to call Scott. I wasn't quite sure what you were taking for additional comment. Um, so it's only this, ele this these elevations and the, these sides, um, the west, I guess, and the north side, um, but you're not, you did not consider once again, the height issue that I had mentioned about um, how it dwarfed the uh, historic structure, the older part, that was not up for discussion again. Is that true? That's correct. Okay. 
Okay. Well, then um, my comments are, are limited to the fact that this, anything would have improved the kind of flatness of the original design. And, and so this looks better to me. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else added? All right, that was the public hearing on this agenda. All right, uh, do we have the next applicants? We do, they're on the lobby. Next item on our agenda is ZP 23273 Adam Street. Uh, proposed construction of a new three story, three unit building. So, AJ, I want to point out a small detail on this item. Uh oh. Oh, no, it's a small detail. Okay. Um, looking at the project plans earlier today, uh, I noticed that the trash and bushes in the front yard setback. So, it needs to move. So, the detail item, I would suggest conditioning it. You would add as your conditional approval to relocate the trash. Relocate or probably easiest to maybe best to put the coders in the garage. But I think it'd be handled by the condition. Either relocate or put them in the garage. Yes, they know, do they know that that is your commentary? Yeah. So uh, you want to raise your right hand? Thank you. You swear the testimony you're about to give is true and uh, in, the, in the matter under consideration is true and correct in the claims of workers perjury. I do. Okay. Um, so introduce yourselves and just quickly walk us through. We have the staff report, and I'm assuming you just heard Scott's comments about like, the crash for so, okay. so why don't you just quickly walk us through what you're doing and see if the board has any questions. Okay, uh, uh, Daniel Goldsman, I'm the architect on this uh, proposal as well as, as the owner. Uh, this is my partner, John Yokin, who's also the owner. Uh, and I'm certainly willing to walk through the, the entire show. Um, I, I did not receive a, a new staff report. I don't know if there is one. Uh, There's so, not. So Scott just commented on the fact that the trash receptacles were located in the rear yard setback, front yard setback, sorry, and would need to be relocated uh, out of the front yard setback. Yeah, we're, we're more than willing uh, to do that. And again, I'm, I'm certainly willing to give the whole presentation. Uh, I don't know if it's appropriate to ask if it's Worthwhile. Uh, we were here once already, uh, and we're here again. So if it's still not worth me giving the presentation, uh, maybe you could point out the changes. I can certainly do that. Sure. Uh, Forty-one Adams Street, uh, one two-acre lot remains a three-unit building. The footprint has grown very slightly. The building uh, is the same width, but it's become a bit longer. Uh, the the uh, layout internally has uh, has remained mostly the same, but uh, based on the previous DRB hearing, uh, we got unfavorable comments from both the board and the community regarding the roof deck, uh, regarding the exterior stair, and uh, sort of our feedback was pretty emphatically that the design was not uh, well received. Uh, so we received some additional comments from the board uh, for the design to be more modern and sleek, uh, to, to revise the walkway, various other changes. Uh, so, and we also looked again in, in detail at the uh, section in the ordinance regarding the active and, and inviting street edge to see how we can uh, how we can 
accommodate that. So in light of the combined feedback and the, the direction we got from the board, uh, we have made the following changes. The roof deck is gone. The exterior stair is gone. Uh, the design uh, is more uh, sleek and modern. Uh, we have a different mix of materials. The body of the building is now proposed to be corrugated metal, and the bump pumps are proposed to be a thermally modified uh, wood product. So uh, that's that is an, an attempt to sort of uh, mix up the design. Uh, it, uh, we have, uh, there was a comment uh, about the desire to see. Uh, maybe an overhang of the roof line to help bring the building together. So we incorporated this large cornice uh, across the front of the building uh, to try and do that. But, uh, we, there was a comment about uh, the entry to have uh, be marked by attractive landscape walkways connected to the sidewalk and grounds with some lighting to enhance and feel safe. So per the revised site plan uh, that we submitted, uh, where able, we, we extended the walkways all the way to the sidewalk. Uh, we added uh, some, land, some landscaping on our site, uh, not on the, the, the uh, city's property, but at the property line where we could. Uh, we also incorporated some lighting uh, there for aesthetics and safety. Uh, so, uh, and you know, we we went through this section of the ordinance uh, regarding the active and inviting uh, street edge, regarding the building materials, the physical uh, step backs along the facade, no large expanses of of uh, undifferentiated building materials, uh, varied fenestration patterns. Uh, the bays, the vertical facade articulation, uh, the rhythm of the openings. Um, it talks about uh, patios, decks, bays, articulated base, cornice, recessed entries, uh, which we did the on the ground floor. The man doors are now uh, recessed into the building. The garage doors remain along the facade. So we attempted to go through. Um, uh, both the feedback we got from the board and the ordinance and incorporated uh, and from the community, quite honestly, and, and tried to get all that in this, to this revised place. I think the plan's a lot better. I don't know if you think so, but, I, but uh, uh, it's sort of nice at the deck now where you can get to the deck without having to go through a bedroom. So, Scale on the back of the building is a lot better. I think it's thank you for the changes. I'm I'm pleased with it. Did a nice job revising it, taking those things into consideration. It's great. I wasn't here with the first one, but I agree. In the second, yeah, and I apologize. I realized it. This was the one I wasn't able to make, and uh, I would share the comments about the roof deck. And I think it's a nice project as it's still when I'm sitting here today. So, uh, is there anyone online who'd like to speak on this? One person online, if you'd like to speak on this item, raise your hand. Okay. Yeah, Sharon Busher. Sharon, you're up. You're still under us, Sharon. Thank you. Okay, so I'm, I don't need to be sworn in again. Okay, thank you. Um, I just wanted to comment um, to the applicant that as a member of the community that made comments about the back stairs and the concern about the rooftop, um, uh, access to the rooftop, and, and then the neighbors stating concerns about noise and activities that might occur there. Um, I want to appreciate that you listened and that you 
um, made changes that you felt were in keeping with what the neighborhood had had pointed out as some problems with your original design, but also hopefully a design that makes it really a very good place for um, the occupants to um, move, move into. So I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, so often um, I weigh in and point out things that I have concerns about. Um, I don't think I frequently enough thank people when they respond. Um, uh, so I just wanted to do that. Your design, I, I'm more of a traditionalist. So your design um, is, and that's, and that's really not for me to say so much, is, is more modern. And I, I feel um, I would have preferred a more traditional structure in that section. But um, that's that's your taste and that's up to the DRB to discuss if there are any problems with that. But thank you so much for responding to the community's concerns. Yep. Thank you. Any further comments? All right, with that we'll close public hearing. Um, so we still have one thing left on our agenda technically which is 375 South Union. It was on our consent agenda and the applicants are not here. Um, what does the board want to do? Approve it, ask them questions, reconvene it. Yeah, agenda item is pretty straightforward. They're actually Making an effort at the historic interior of the building, which is yeah, not a requirement. I said doing that. Jeff Phelps. Is there anybody the public to speak on it? Yeah, is there anybody online who wants to speak on 375 South Union? So raise your hand. No. Um Call if we have to. We don't. I mean, we, we say they have to be here for our reasons, but well, I'll make a motion that we approve it and uh, the Red Staff's comments and findings. Um, on ZP 2375, it's on our consent agenda. I move that we approve the application by consent and adopt the staff's comments. Second, Brad? Right. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? All right. Um, so with that, close the meeting.